Hello and welcome to another companion video for our distance learning students. In this video I'll be looking at fitting an RF connection. Uh, in particular today I'll be fitting a PL259 to a short piece of coax. This video is a companion to worksheet number 35 in the intermediate book which gives guidance on practical assessment that requires us to make an RF connection either using a BNC or PL259 connector. There are many types of PL259 available on the open market. You can get solder, crimp, screw terminal, right angled and of course the obligatory gold plated type of connector. Here I'm using the compression type of PL259. This allows me to put a blob of solder on the center pin. It provides an excellent mechanical and a superb electrical connection. So first of all we need to prepare our coax. Coax is made up of an inner conductor, a insulating dielectric, some braid and an outer sheath. Here we're just going to measure up how much coax we're going to cut off. I'm using the actual plug as a length and all we actually need to do is remove the outer protective cover to expose the braid. Taking it nice and gently, not applying too much pressure, just enough to cut through. And there we go, we've removed the outer protective cover to expose the braid making sure, of course, we haven't removed any of the braid in the process. Here's our plug. As you can see, I've got a squidgy compression joint, a end washer, and I'm just going to use these elements here to measure up how much of the braid I need to remove. Again, making nice gentle cuts, we can cut straight through the braid and also start to make our way through the dielectric at exactly the same time. And there we have it. Now we just need to remove the dielectric. Again, making gentle cuts so we don't destroy or go through the inner core. As I remove the dielectric here, you'll see that I'm just applying a slight twist. This will ensure that the inner conductor will remain intact and we don't get any nasty whispers as I do this. Now is a good time to tin the end of the coax ready for soldering when we finally fit the plug. And there we go, there's our coax all prepared, ready to go. So fitting the plug is very straightforward. Start by putting the captive nut, then the compression joint, and this little washer here, we're just going to feed down in between the braid and the dielectric. It's quite snug, but it will go over the dielectric and make sure that you don't pull any of the braid on the inside of the connection there. As you can see, I'm just taking my time to make sure it's nice and gentle, not forcing anything here at all. And I just push that down. I'm applying a slight rotation there as we go the way down and checking the end to make sure that there are no braid connections going up the center there. So what will happen here is the compression joint will fit over the braid and onto that washer and the captive nut when it screws onto the body of the coaxial connector will compress the orange uh, washer and make a very tight fit. That gives us a good mechanical and a good electrical connection. nice and tight fit. You'll notice here that there are some slots here that we can attach a spanner and tighten up the, the connection. 
Now, testing, before we actually solder the end of the connection, I just want to do some very simple continuity tests, making sure I don't have a short across the inner and the outer braid of the coax. I'm going to connect one probe to the outer and across the, the, the body there. And indeed, I've got the connection, and I don't have a connection across the middle pin. That proves for sure that we don't have a short. And again, to test connectivity, I'm going from the center pin to the inner and the outer to ensure I don't have a short. And indeed, I do have connection to both sides of the coax. So this is good now and ready for soldering. So here we are, we're just adding now a little bit of heat, feeding in the solder into the center pin and we're just making the end off nice and tidy. And there's our plug finished off, a nice tight connection there, good mechanical, good electrical, and a nice solder joint at the end. And if I do the same at the other side of this coax, I've got myself a very nice patch lead. I hope this video has been of some use to you, and I'll catch you in the next one. Thank you, bye-bye.